Hi and welcome to another video. So in this video I'll be going over my stock picker solutions to the third project in the first four projects you do in the Ruby path of the Odin project. So in this exercise we want to implement a method that takes in an array of stock prices, one for each hypothetical day. And then your method should return a pair of days that represent the best day to buy, i.e. the lowest day, and the best day to sell, the highest day. So for example here the lowest day actually occurs here and the highest day is the first index here. However your method should find where the big biggest spread exists between any given value and its subsequent values. So in this example here the spread between index 1 and 4 is the largest so we can see that corresponds to value 3 and value 15 which is indeed the largest spread that exists in this array for a buy low sell high. Okay, let's look at my solutions. My first my first attempt at this was very convoluted. It's kind of a theme here. I didn't know that there was the each with index enumerable uh, that there is in Ruby, which makes this exercise far more straightforward. So I was really trying to compare an index and a value using other means without using each with index. And I'll show you what that looks like here albeit uh, it is somewhat confusing to follow, at least it was confusing again for me to wrap my head around it. I remember this particular problem, it caused me a bit of uh, anguish to try and figure out uh, the long form way, but I was very happy when I did in the end. But essentially what we need to be doing is comparing both indexes and values, uh, because we can only be comparing values to those that come afterwards, not ones that come before. Okay, so how do I approach this? Well, first I define my method picker, and we pass in the argument of prices. And then first we needed to make a, a hash where the key is equal to the index uh, in the prices array, and the value is equal to the values in the prices array. And I figured out that it needed to be a hash uh, because the way I was approaching this problem, arrays would not have worked. So here we have an empty hash, prices hash. And then for each index of the array, prices array, so each index i, we set the prices hash i, and it's going to be equal to the value of that index. And I just I have printed it here, I've put these code in pieces of code in here just to print them to the console so you can see what it produces. So here we have prices hash, and we just have a hash where the the keys are the equal to the index of the prices array and the values are equal to the values of each corresponding index in the array. So you can see we have index 0 is 17, index 1 is 3, and so on. So we just have a, an object that matches the array, or a hash, I should say, that matches the array. Next, we need to make an array of the prices hash keys, which will be referenced further below. So I just say here, prices hash keys is equal to prices hash dot keys. So calling that method on that hash. And again, I've printed it here so you can see we now just have an array where the values are equal to the keys in the hash, which are equal to the indexes of the original prices array. Next, uh, I made a second hash where the key of day and a value is empty, which is going to be used below. Uh, and I note here that I can't use prices.each because duplicate prices get stored in the same key and not uniquely. So I remember I was having a problem here. I had to get uh, duplicate prices. So if we had an array of prices where we had multiple prices that were same, I had to be getting them stored at a different with a different key or index. Otherwise, uh, my solution here would not have worked. So output hash, again, I have an empty hash called output hash. And for the prices array on each index, again, calling the index, the, the index, um, we're going to be setting the key equal to the index in that array, but with a blank value. So here we have output hash. And you can see we have the same keys equal to the indexes in the prices array, but the values in this hash are empty. And that will be clear in a second. Okay, and then this is where it got really tricky uh, in figuring out how to do this piece of logic, but I had to loop through the prices hash 
which is this one here where we have the key value pairs that are equal to the array. And for each key value pair, I need to execute a while loop that iterates uh, equal to the hash length minus the position of the given key. And that's the index pulled from line nine. So that's um, where I'm making this price as hash keys. That's why I had an empty hash or array of keys. Okay, you're probably not following any longer and uh, I'm not surprised because this, this is pretty convoluted. Uh, and then I subtract the subsequent values in the hash from the value and store the output in the output hash. Okay, so this is what the code looks like here. I'm iterating over this prices hash here. And for each key value pair, we have key value. So I have a counter here of equal to one. This is just for the iter number of iterations on my loop. And while this counter is less than or equal to prices hash length minus prices hash keys index of k minus one. What we're doing here is we're taking each index and we're going to iterate through as many times as there are values or indexes left in the array. So if we have an array that's five indexes and we're starting at zero, then we're going to iterate four more times. And if we're starting at one, then we're going to iterate three more times. So we're just taking what's left after the index of interest and iterating over it. And then what we're doing through those iterations is we're saying the output hash key, we're going to be adding to this output hash, which is empty, if you recall. We have keys, but no values. So we're going to be adding to that the value minus the prices hash key plus this counter C. So what that's going to be doing each time is it's going to be comparing the value to the one next to it, and then to the second one, then to the third one, then the fourth one, and so on. It's going to be doing that, like I said, from each value in the array through each subsequent value until you get to the end of the array. And we have the counter here for adding on one each time. And then we end this while loop. And this, this took me a while to figure out off the top of my head using a whiteboard exactly how to get this to work. But essentially what I'm trying to do here is recreate the each with index um, functionality without actually using the each with index enumerable. And you can see what it does. So we have this output hash array where we have the keys equal to the indexes and the prices array. We have blank values. And what I'm doing, I'm adding to this array using that while loop. So I'm taking the number at index zero and then I'm subtracting each subsequent number from it and plonking these values in an array that is the value to the key of the index of the value in the prices array. So I think practically what I'm saying here is I'm taking value 17 and I'm subtracting three, which gives us 14. And then I'm subtracting six, which is, gives us 11. And I'm subtracting nine, which gives us eight, and so on. So you can see here, each key in this output hash array is the number of values in the value array is actually reducing one each time because we're moving through the values in this array. And obviously, each time you move, there's one fewer values left in the array. And that's what we get left with is this output hash. And then we want to loop through the output hash to find where the lowest value is, because where that lowest value is, is going to tell us where the biggest spread occurs. So we loop through the output hash to find the lowest value in each key. And then we want to push that to an array called the lowest array. And then values are by minus cell, right? So we're, we're doing the by day comes first, it has to come first, and each subsequent day is going to be the sell day. So we actually want, this is going to be a negative number that we're looking for, the largest one, right? Because we're doing buy minus sell, we're buying low, selling high. So a negative value is a gain and a positive is a loss. So again, I define an empty array, 
and I say output hash. So for each key value pair in here, uh, push to the lowest array, the lowest value. All right. So then what we end up with is an array that tells us the lowest value of each value subtracting all of its subsequent values. And what we see here is that the second value or the second index in the lowest array has the lowest value of negative 12. So that's telling us that that is our buy day. But then we have to figure out what's the sell day. Where is that negative, negative 12 value? So that is where this logic comes in here. So we compact the lowest array just to get rid of any zeros. And then we say the buy day is the hash index where the lowest uh, value or no, lowest number out of all values exists. So like I said, that's this second value here. So that corresponds to index one. Okay, so that's the buy day. And then the sell day is the buy day index plus the index of the lowest number in its array. So what we're looking at here, for example, in our prices hash, right here, that negative 12 occurs at index one. And then we need to find out at which index that negative 12 occurs. And then we plus one to that to find the buy day. And that's what this logic is doing here. And then I just put, I'll put S the buy day and the sell day. You can see here that the, we want to be buying on day one and then we want to be selling on day two, three, four, five We're at the 15 value here, because that's where our biggest spread exists. Okay, so hopefully that makes some sense of how I got there. And you could probably, you're probably looking at this right now thinking, well, that is a very inefficient or long winded way to do this. But at the same time, I'm, I'm glad I went through these steps because it was a real challenge. And it really helped me understand um, how to work with arrays and hashes uh, in Ruby. And now, obviously, I'm grateful that we have the each with index enumerable because it does make this far easier. But I'm glad I have exposure to both. And here we have the each with index enumerable in use here. And you can see that this method is far more efficient. So what we're doing here is we're actually comparing the same array to itself, and we get to compare each value and index to itself through a loop. Uh, so you can imagine, again, if we had an array uh, of five values, then we would have 25 comparisons. So what we have here is a method picker, and we're passing in the prices array as an argument. And then we have what I call three kind of tracking variables here. We have buy, sell, and profit. And then what we do is we call prices, each with index, with a buy price and buy day. And then we nest prices, each with index, with a sell price and sell day. So like I said, what this is going to do is it's going to take each value and index in that array, and it's going to compare every other value and index in that array. And what it's saying is if the sell day is greater than the buy day, i.e. it is coming after, and if the sell price minus the buy price is greater than the profit, then the profit is equal to sell price minus buy price, and the buy is equal to buy day and the sell is equal to sell day. And why this is so useful is that we have many cases where there is going to be a profit, right? And the first time that this program encounters a profit, it's going to be setting that profit in this variable here. But then the next time it encounters a situation where sell day is greater than buy day, it's going to be looking at this profit value. And if that profit value is not as high, then it's going to return and continue. But if that profit value is greater, then it's going to set the new profit value with a new buy day and sell day. And it's going to keep doing that until it reaches the maximum profit. And then that will correspond to your buy day and your sell day. Hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully this is useful to you out there watching this. Give it a go. And if you have any questions or comments, suggestions, please do leave a comment on the video. Thank you. Bye-bye.